Hello, welcome back to another show. I'm Sid, and in today's video, I'll be expanding on the topics covered in the previous two videos, which included eyeball tracking and iris animation for Spark AR Studio. This is a simple technique. I'm just going to be adding a little bit more to it. So if you haven't already seen those two videos, I'd suggest going back and rewatching those or watching them for the first time, because although I will be covering the entire tutorial in this video, I'll be covering the first two thirds quite briefly because I already have done just so that I can get on to the actual uh, blink to change, which is the main crux of today's video. So the total effect will be uh, tracking onto the eyeballs with an iris texture. And then when the user taps, they will scale up. And when the user blinks, they will adjust to a different texture. In this case, we have snake eyes and magic eight ball eyes. And then when you tap again, they'll scale down. It's pretty simple. Let's pause, create a new project and we'll get started. If anyone is watching these videos, finds in, finding anything that I've said useful, I don't know why you would, but maybe leave a like, a comment, subscribe to the channel. We just passed 70 subscribers and we're well on our way to 100, which is like crazy to say. YouTube subscribe, but one YouTube subscriber is definitely worth like 10 followers on any other platform. That's just my opinion. Anyway, links to everything I'll be using, including this iris.fbx file, will be in the description below. So check before you ask. And with that being said, let's get straight into it. We're going to add a face tracker to our scene. Like I said, I'll be doing this part quite quickly. And then a face mesh. But also feel free to skip forwards if you've already seen parts of it. Material layer. Material will reduce the opacity down to one. See these eyelids? We want those to be used as occluders. So we don't want to reduce the opacity down to zero. We'll go to one and that will allow us to adjust the X and Y axis. Uh, adjust the Z axis to occlude part of our irises. I'll even rename that invisible mesh. And invisible mesh. Cool. So now we drag our two textures in snake eyes and magic eight ball. They're just going to chill for a while. Do the same thing with our iris. We'll drag that in. Like I said, links in the description down below. We're going to take this iris with this lambda. The lambda is the texture for it. Uh, I'm going to change that to our snake eye. And then I'm going to make it white so that it's much clearer and brighter. And I'm going to make it flat. And then I'm going to drag the iris inside of our face tracker and connect up this lambda. Boom! See, now we have a snake eye sitting right in the middle of my nose. It's great. We don't want it there, but it's there, and we're going to do some stuff with it. So we've got our iris. Now we want to add the rotation and the position and the scale. All of these to our patch editor. If I drag this out of the way, you see that we now have these three scale we can drag out of the way for a second and we'll keep iris in position up here next thing we're going to do is drag our face tracker into the scene and bring these three patches a little bit closer together and then we'll connect up an eyeball patch which we will connect to our left iris position and our left iris rotation okay uh, now we can duplicate this or delete it <laughs> duplicate this We'll rename that one left, snake, you know what I meant, and we'll call this one right snake. We'll do the same thing, we'll make this visible in the patch editor, we'll add the scale. We'll get our 3D position, and we'll connect the iris position and the eyeball rotation. So now you see we have both eyes, left and right tracking pretty pretty good the eyelids aren't occluding like i said they wouldn't be that's something we'll need to fix in a second and also the scale is a little bit off but as we've dragged uh, as we've got our patches inside the patch edit now we can't set scale or adjust it here we're gonna have to do that inside of the patch editor using uh, some cool stuff so next we're gonna add a screen tap that's how our user will interact with the screen to scale the eyes up from zero to one that will run out to a switch the switch will connect to a pulse. So when the user taps the screen, it flips the switch, which sends a pulse that triggers the animation. So we'll have an animation next. And we'll set this up to reverse. So we want our animation, when we scale the eyes up, we want them to scale up, but then not be stuck. We want them to be able to scale back down when the user taps again. So in that, for this to work, we're gonna have to reverse our loop. So you just make sure that this is connected up. Then we connect this to a transition. Uh, and finally, we'll get these two connected up at the end. So we've got our scale for each eye. 
they're both going to disappear now. Because we can't scale up in here, we're going to set our start, which is 0, 0, 0, and we're going to set our end. In this case, I'm going to drop it down by a little bit to around 0.77 for the X and Y, but only because when you simulate touch, I'll demonstrate, they scale up. They're not they're not intrusive. They're like just uh, roughly the size of my actual irises, which is great. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the space tracker, look directly into the camera, pause the screen. Uh, sorry, this mesh, not the face tracker, and I'm going to adjust slightly until there's a little bit of iris occlusion, so that when I unpause and blink, you can now see that my eyes, my eyelids are in front of the iris textures that I'm using. So there is a little bit of occlusion. It's not perfect and you can adjust it even more to get it more perfect. But for the purposes of this tutorial, it'll be fine. So now we have tap to scale with occluded blinkable uh, iris, irises. Lovely, huh? Cool. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take both of these and we're gonna duplicate them. And we're gonna call this one left eight ball. We'll call this one right eight ball. We'll do the exact same thing. We'll do rotation, scale, and position. We'll get all those in. We'll drag the scale down here. This. Connect those two up on our scale. Right position, left position, rotation, position. Cool. So once you've got all of those in order, just connect them up the same way you did with the previous ones. So we've got our position and our rotation. Right now they're identical in every way. So if I come down on here, you'll see. Wait, give me a second. I'll duplicate this real quick. We'll call this one Snake. We'll call this one 8 ball. And I'll even change the texture on it so it's actually an 8 ball. And now we can come down. Under our two eight balls, you want to drag, do the drop down menu so that you can see this little iris object. Do that for both of them. Control select uh, or don't. Yeah, it really won't let you do it. <laughs> we'll do a uh, eight ball like this. Eight ball like this. So now we've got two eight balls here. Cool. Uh, now we're going to do the tap to change. So a blink to change rather so because it's a facial gesture you need a face tracker as part of your scene it's not the same as a screen tap where the user just taps on the screen and that engages the interaction in this case you need the face tracker and then we're going to drag from that and create a blink so now we've got our blink this is pretty much like every other thing that you might do uh, where it's just alternating between layers so we're going to add a counter and connect that up to some equals exactly not the equals the equals exactly is cool so we got that we got that minimize all these okay so now we make these four control select these and we'll make all four of them visible inside of our patch editor so we've got a right on our left so now we'll copy this and we'll have one option be our left eye with a snake and our right eye with a snake and we'll have our other option be the eight ball and the eight ball and we'll make this one and we'll set this at two because we have two counts uh, that go zero one which is one two in programming if that makes any sense this is like really rough shot because i'm a little bit sick and as much as i'm motivated to make these videos like i got a head cold i'm a bit numb Things aren't uh, things aren't so hot, or oh, they're very hot actually over here. Uh, yeah, sorry, where was I? A bit distracted. The blinking works, the thingy works, everything works. It's great. Do you want me to add some instructions? Should I do that real quick? Uh, what have I got here? Camera instructions. No, what am I saying? Device custom instructions. Instructions on opening. Where did that patch go? Drag that up here, out of the way. We've got a prop project, edit properties, capabilities, instructions, custom instructions. There is no blink. 
but that's cool. We'll just do tap to change. And then we'll copy this, add that to our token. Cool, look at that, tap to change. So now, hopefully, everything is grand. We've got tap to increase the scale, blink to change, and then tap to, to scale down again. These are all the patches that I used. So this is the patch that connects the eyeballs and allows them to uh, like track onto the eyes. Just like general tracking and rotation. This is the animation loop that will scale them from zero to one. So bottom, bottom, you can see that working. And then this blink is a uh, account with some equals exactly connected that just alternates between visible layers. So we can switch between uh, iris textures, in this case a snake and a magic eight ball. And then just for good measure, I added some instructions. That was a last minute thing. I wasn't even thinking of it until I did it. Uh, which is why I didn't know that there was a no blink uh, instruction. I'm gonna have to keep looking into those. There's gotta be some more stuff going on. Anyway, this is a very long video. It's kind of stupid. I'm a little bit distracted. I don't know why people keep liking these. <laughs> it's throwing me off a little bit, kind of stressing me out, but I appreciate it nonetheless. Thank you for watching. Uh, leave a like if you liked, comment if you have any comments at all. Like, I like feedback, I like compliments. Uh, I haven't had any like major criticism yet, but I'm looking forward to it. You know, you've got to roll with the punches. Yeah, I'm going to try and make more videos. I say this every time I make one, and then it ends up being a couple days between, or maybe even a week. But I have a few more ideas for things I want to do. Like, a lot of ideas. And I'm just going to try and crank out like as many videos as I can, either today or tomorrow. So, yeah, look forward to that. Subscribe to stay notified, and I'll see you next time. Peace.